that is like the messiest of all messy bands, but we're gonna ignore that. Hi everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. This week I have a really fun card game for you. So anybody that knows, my husband and I in real life knows that we love a good card game. We like having blackjack and poker nights, just for fun of course, but so do my boys, they love a little go fish and a little war. So I wanted to share a card game with you called 31. I think my second grade and first grade teachers are really going to like this one. Um, it's perfect for the beginning of year in second grade to review addition. And then later on in first grade, after you've been practicing addition, then students will like this one as well. So let's see how to play. All you need to play this fun game is a deck of cards. You'll need one deck per grouping of students and some cubes or some sort of chips. Each player will need three of them. So it doesn't need to be cubes. It could be three bottle caps or whatever you have laying around. But these represent their lives. So each player is gonna start with three lives. As always, I'm going to go ahead and insert a few pictures just so you can visually see what I'm talking about. But this game is going to be played with two, three, or four players. I really like starting it off with two or three players. It just makes the game a little faster as they practice their addition, but you can totally do four players as well. So to get this game set up, each player is going to be given their three lives, like I said, and then go ahead and lay them down in front of them so everyone can see who has all their lives. And they'll be given three different cards. So they can go ahead, you deal it one by one, each player gets three cards, and the rest will go in the middle face down. The object of the game is to be the student closest to the number 31 by the end of the deck of cards. So to do that, you'll go ahead and flip over one of the cards, and that will be face up. And students, starting with player one, students will choose if they want to choose that card and add it to their pile, and they have to exchange one of theirs. So they can only have three cards at one time. And this card might help them get closer to 31. Or they can go ahead and leave the card there and just pass their turn to the next player. So then the next player looks at the card and they will either take the five and exchange it in their pile or they will flip over a new card from the pile and see if they want to exchange that one. If they don't, they will go ahead and put it on top. When I play this game with my students, they can go one of two different ways. It will either continue going until the whole deck of cards has already been flipped. And when that is done, when all the cards have gone through, everybody turns their cards face up and they see who was closest to the number 31. If you're playing with just two people, then whoever was the closest wins and the other person loses a life. If you're playing with three or four students, then whoever had the lowest number or the number farthest away from 31, will go ahead and lose their life. And then you reshuffle and start again. The other way you can play this game is that when students reach 31 in their hand, they can go ahead and knock on the table. And when a student knocks, then they have 31 and the other players playing will lose a life. You can try it both ways in your classroom and see which way you like better. Usually I like when they play all the way through the deck of cards first, because that way they're consistently adding and figuring out what number they have in their hand. And sometimes students will actually get a 31 really quickly. So it kind of just extends the game a little longer, but that's totally up to you. So those are the two ways that you can decide how the game ends. Now for each card's value, every ace is going to be an 11. So I always let students know that an ace is not a one, it is actually an 11. So that will always hold true, they cannot change it for a one, it's not interchangeable for a one, they, it is 11. Kings, queens, and jacks, these are all tens, along with obviously the 10. And the rest of the cards are face value. So if they pull a four, it's a four, a five is a five, etc. Students will keep playing the game until everyone has lost all their lives and there's only one person left standing. That person is the winner. Like I said, this game is great for second grade students at the beginning of the year just to review their math. And first grade students like to play this. Usually in the spring I've done it with my classroom, but you could also do it in the winter depending on when you're really teaching addition. You know, I usually find that I spend those first couple months in first grade just really honing in on the number zero through 20. Um, and then even going afterwards to the number zero to 120 and thinking about the place value and what they mean, that their addition skills might not be fast enough for this type of game yet. But if you have students who are really great and excelling in addition, then you can go ahead and play this with them as well. That would be kind of a great differentiated activity that they could do. I always love a good card game because a deck of cards is really cheap. You can buy a ton of them and they're just fun to play with for students and there's so many math games you can play. 
I'm going to go ahead and link below some of the other math games I have done. And actually some of them are phonics games too, but with the cards, it's usually math. Um, but I'll go ahead and link below some of the other card games that I have done Sunday Spotlights on. I have Snap, Spoon, Sort the Deck, so I'll link those below so you can go ahead and see them as well. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If this is something you think you can play in your classroom, please go ahead and let me know in a comment down below. And as always, make sure you subscribe and click that bell. That way you are notified of every new week's video. See you next Sunday. Bye.